Yeah, this is this is Barry Kine. I serve as a Louisiana State climatologist. I'm also a professor at the uh, at Louisiana State University in the Department of Geography and Anthropology. And what I'd like to do is actually present some information on the the recent flood. So since it, since this was such an extraordinary event, I think it's worth detailing how the storm unfolded, what kind of a storm system it was, uh, and talk a little bit about the rains and and just how rare they were across the region. What I'd like to do is just kind of walk you through the uh, the origins of the storm. And to do that, I'm going to start out looking at uh, August, the, August the 3rd. And I'm going to pull up a, a daily weather map here. In fact, let me go back to the 2nd. It will actually be even better. So here we are on August the 2nd. So we're going back uh, you know, a week and a half to two weeks uh, prior to the heavy rains hitting Baton Rouge. And if you look at this particular map, what I'm pointing out here is uh, there's a giant H sitting off of uh, the panhandle of Florida. So basically it's high weather, uh, high pressure rather, fair weather across the region, and uh, obviously you know, nothing ominous going on whatsoever. So what I'm going to do is walk you through the next several days and talk a little bit about how this storm formed and what kind of storm it was. So here we are looking, this is the beginning of the storm. This is uh, August the 3rd, we, and you can see this little dashed line right here. This dashed line is uh, telling us that uh, there's, there's a, what they call a trough, which uh, the Weather Service uses this uh, demarcation to denote instability in the atmosphere, but it's not so prevalent that, that they want to put a front on it. And uh, so it's basically a, a little perturbation or a little disturbance in the, in the weather system, but uh, you know, nothing overly serious. So this is what we would call a, you know, a Gulf tropical disturbance. And I'm going to go to the next, next slide. So this is August the 3rd. And these are at 7 o'clock in the morning. So this is 7 a.m. on August the 3rd. This is 7 a.m. on the 4th. And you can still see this little dash there, little trough. And again, this is a Gulf tropical disturbance. Now, I note that tropical storms and hurricanes grow out of tropical disturbances like this. And in essence, this is what I would call an, uh, you know, an easterly wave or a tropical wave. And many of these things grow up into you know, big, powerful hurricanes. But this one didn't. This one just stayed this little... Um, seemingly innocuous uh, area of disturbed weather, which would you know, produce some scattered thunderstorms under ordinary circumstances, except this one was very deeply rooted within the higher parts of the atmosphere and actually had a little bit more substance to it, even though it really didn't have any surface winds that, that, that mattered very much. Now, I also want to point out, as we continue to walk through these maps, the steering currents were very, very weak for this particular event. Uh, the, the, the steering currents are very weak for this particular storm system, and as a result, it's just kind of uh, meandering around uh, the, the panhandle of Florida. And, uh, but again, still not much of a big deal, although I, I have to say that early on, the Weather Service knew something was up with this event because they actually predicted some fairly heavy rainfall for the panhandle of Florida early on in a, in a long part of the Gulf Coast uh, into Mississippi. But... Um, they really just got the geography a little bit wrong. So they knew that this thing had the p potential to produce some pretty heavy rainfall. Uh, but again, given how uh, slow it was meandering and, and uh, the steering currents made it very, very difficult to actually nail exactly where all this was going to happen. So this is on August the 5th. Here we are on the 6th. It kind of is retrograded back a little further toward the east. And we're on the 7th. It's even further east. And then here's the 8th. It, uh, you still got this little trough right here. Um, you know, it's taken on a little bit more development here on the 8th. Then we move over here to, to uh, August the 9th. And now they actually have a closed isobar around the, the, uh, the area of low pressure. So it's actually gotten a, maybe slightly more organized, but then that, that's going to ultimately disappear as well as we move over to the 10th. And here we have it, on the 10th, we have it sitting right off the, uh, this is on Wednesday now, Wednesday, August 10th. It's sitting right off of southeastern Louisiana. And one of the things that really struck me on Saturday as I went out to, you know, to, to observe what was going on was just how slow the mo water was moving in all the bayous and, and you know, the drainage network here in Baton Rouge. Um, um, you know, some of the creeks and, and, and uh, Dawson Creek, for example, runs right near my house. And I kind of monitor that very closely because it's close. And uh, when it was at, at its uh, peak, peak level, it seemed like it was barely even moving. And that's because all the, the river systems uh, you know, below it were at that elevation or higher and, and preventing it from uh, uh, moving the water out. So very com complex hydrological situation here. And we just had widespread flooding across the region. 
counterclockwise circular circulation around the area of low pressure to our, basically to our, uh, to Baton Rouge's west. We had storms moving from north to south, and on our east, they were moving from south to north as they rotated around this area of low pressure. And it just continued to produce rain, and it was just, uh, it just never backed off. It was unrelenting. And uh, we went, I, in Baton Rouge, we, we went for 32 straight hours of rainfall. I mean, I remember waking up, uh, I mean, it, it started raining on Thursday night. When I got up on, on Friday morning, it was still raining, and it rained every waking moment of Friday. When I went to bed Friday night, it was still raining, and when I got up on Saturday, it was, it was raining some more. So we went 32 straight hours with rainfall, and we went with measured rainfall, and we went 39 straight hours, at least at Baton Rouge Airport now, we went 39 straight hours where we had at least a trace of rain every single hour. And, uh, and the, the rainfall totals just kept mounting and mounting and mounting, and I'll talk about those in just a second. But let me finish this sequence. So this brings us into Saturday, August 13th started to wind down a little bit over in the Baton Rouge area, but rains were, were howling pretty good in, in uh, southwestern Louisiana. And now it's starting to be absorbed into a, an approaching frontal system. And this frontal system is part of what actually was uh, keeping the storm from moving in the first place. And then we'll get into the 14th real quick. I guess we'll have to weave this pause out of here too. And uh, here we are on the 14th where it's essentially absorbed in the front and, uh, and it helped produce, produce some you know, extra rainfall over in, uh, in you know, western Louisiana and into Texas. So that's kind of the sequence. So now what I want to do is shift gears a little bit and talk about how much rain did it actually produce. Okay, so what we're looking at in this uh, graphic is the radar estimated rainfall across Louisiana. And what's really impressive about this event is just how large the rainfall footprint actually is with incredibly heavy rains. For example, the areas in red, which you can see all the way, you know, over into the New Orleans area and on, on into, uh, all the way into Texas, actually, in uh, you know, southwestern Louisiana and on it toward Beaumont and so on, uh, that's all five inches or more. But the area of 10 inches or more starts at, with this area of magenta that, that I'm pointing out here. Mm -hmm. And all that area had 10 inches or more. The, where we start with the purple in here, that's all 15 inches or more. And then in the white, we're looking at 20 inches or more of rainfall. And that's just unbelievable to have this big of a footprint of at least 10 inches, and the footprints for 15 and 20 inches are also incredibly impressive. So clearly, you're gonna have impacts with an, an event like this. This is seven day rainfall, just so you know, um, ending on, let's see, I'll get the date here. That's seven day rainfall uh, ending on August the 17th. So this is going back from, uh, I guess, the 11th to the 17th. And, uh, but which, which uh, uh, encompasses the, the, uh, you know, the heart of the storm, really, which was uh, last Thursday and Friday and into Saturday morning. And some of the rainfall totals, I just wanted to make some mention of. Um, of the official National Weather Service office gauges, the one that had the highest amount of rainfall was at Livingston, Louisiana. It had 21.86 inches of rain, so almost 21.9 inches of rain. Uh, to put that in perspective, a 100-year event for two days is 14.1 uh, inches. So a 100-year event is 14.1. We had 21.86. So how rare is that? Well, looking at what's called NOAA Atlas 14, uh, that would suggest that this event was greater than 1,000 years at, at that particular location. Now, you have to take that with a pound of salt. I mean, we don't have a thousand years of rainfall records to fully understand what a thousand year event is. This is statistically produced, but you can see how big of an outlier it is compared to anything else that's, uh, that's occurred across this region. And a hundred year event is 14.1 and, and, and you know, this is a full 50% larger. So uh, uh, obviously a very, very big deal. And we had a couple of other locations to see. Norwood had 21.4 inches. It was also greater than a, a thousand year event over two days. Um, Lafayette had 20.79 inches, uh, which was, uh, came out to be greater than a 200-year event for that location. And then New Iberia had 21.51 inches over two days, and that was greater than a 500-year event at that location. Now, in addition to those gauges, there's also a network of gauges called Coco, that's run by a, a group called COCORAS. That's the uh, Community Collaborative Rain, Hail, and Snow Network. And, uh, but anyway, so we have some gauges like that uh, around Louisiana, and we have several sites uh, uh, in, in like North Baton Rouge, Denham Springs, and so on. Den Brown, 
We have an area in North Baton Rouge called Brownfields. They had 26.83 inches of rain. Um, again, uh, clearly greater than a 1,000 year event where uh, you know, a 1,000 year event would be roughly 21 inches uh, for much of this region. Denham Springs, an unofficial Denham Springs gauge had 25.5. Monticello in North Baton Rouge also had 24.02. Central recorded 22.10 inches. Uh, Wakefield had 21.20, Jackson had 21.04, so those are all the ones over, over 20. But the, uh, the largest rainfall measured, and this is one we're still discussing and trying to, trying to figure out uh, uh, its veracity, is a, a measurement from Watson uh, that came out at 31.39 inches. Uh, you know, in, in everything that we've seen up to this point uh, gives us some confidence that this is an accurate measurement. And it's just mind-boggling to get 31.39 inches over two days in, in any specific location. And if you consider, uh, you know, 21 inches is considered a thousand-year event for most of this region. Uh, how rare is uh, 31.39 inches? Uh, you know, we don't really have that answer right here, but uh, it's obviously an extraordinary rainfall total, and uh, not one that we're likely to see again anytime soon. And clearly, with uh, rains like this, it's, uh, it's certainly understandable as to why we would have you know, just widespread flooding across this region. And of course, the hydrology here is very complex, and we have all sorts of you know, major rivers with tributaries going into those rivers. And um, very com complex hydrological situation here, and we just had widespread flooding across the region. So this is Barry Kind. Uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, or learned something from this particular presentation, and I'm now signing off.